Hey, it's your boy Crux here again, and today we're gonna be reviewing another PC case. So let's get a quick intro on Deco. Deco is a 20 years plus veteran in the custom PC industry, and I've seen many design changes of their products throughout the years. Recently, Deco have contacted us to review this casing, and I thought, why not? The more I can help fellow gamers out there, the better. So today we'll be looking at the Deepcool CK560 casing. Let me quickly get through the specification of the case. So by default, the case comes with three 12cm ARGB fans and one 14cm black non-LED fans. For motherboard compatibility, it can fit ITX to bigger EATX motherboards. The front fits up to 360 and all 280 radiator or AIO. The CPU cooler height clearance is 175mm and the GPU lag clearance is 380mm. There's two 3.5 inch hard drive bays and two 2.5 inch SSD bay. For the front I.O., you get two USB 3 ports, one Type-C port, and one audio jack. I'll be using a mid-end spec for our test bench today, a good middle ground to show how capable the case is, and it's also because this is what I use with all other cases to keep our benchmark consistent and comparable. The specification is as follows. We have CPU AMD Ryzen 5 5600X, um, cooled by the stock AMD cooler, an ASUS RG Strix B550 motherboard, colorful CPN DDR4 3200MHz, 16GB of RAM, a gigabyte RTX 3060 Ti gaming OC graphics card measuring at 282mm. And all of this is powered by a Deepcool PQ1000M 80 plus gold full modular power supply, all built into the Deepcool CK560 casing. So let's talk build process. What's a casing review without a build process, right? So the build process is simple enough by starting off similar to 99% of the cases out there by first removing the glass side panel followed by the rear side panel. Located at the bottom are the two 3.5 inch hard drive bays with quick release and slotted installation for the 3.5 inch hard drives which can be repositioned by removing a screw. By default, the case comes with three fans at the front and one 14cm fan at the back. With our demo build, however, I have also installed the Deepcool LS720 AIO CPU cooler, providing us with three additional 12cm ARGB fans. The included three 12cm ARGB fans can either be controlled by the motherboard through the included adapter or through the LED switch on the casing itself, which provides limited number of presets for the user. For the best experience, however, I will always recommend to get a motherboard with ARGB capabilities. For the GPU, there is also a GPU support bracket with two possible locations for you to install it, depending on the length and design of the GPU and the size of the motherboard installed. Cable routing holes are also well positioned, with rubber grommets for the bigger holes like the ones for the 24-pin ATX, Type-C cable, and such. The cutoff for the CPU EPS power is nice and big, providing ample space for cable routing, even with fans installed on the rear and top positions. Cable management-wise, there's nothing special to shout about at the back, but there are also no complaints either. Overall, the build process has been a breeze. Next, let's move on to build quality and design. When I first unboxed the case, I thought to myself, what a great build and quality this casing has. The Deepcool CK560 had a very consistent design language throughout the case. The magnetic filter at the top had square holes instead of circular ones with a soft touch rubber tab printed with the same green blue accent color as the rest of the casing. The USB 3 ports at the top are also colored in a similar fashion, which I really love. All the mesh holes you can find on the casing are also square in shape, with the exception of the front panel, which has an edgy plus sign cutout, which still plays nicely with the square, to be honest. The front panel is easily removable with its magnet mounting method, and here you can access the mesh filter for the front intake. Also easily removable by pushing the tab down. Finally, we come to the main point, what everyone is waiting for, the thermal result. For the testing today, I'm using the OC60 power test, giving a pretty good load to both the CPU and GPU. The ambient temperature at my office is about 24 degrees Celsius with a delta of one Celsius. I'll be testing the casing in a few configurations with its default fan setup and stock AMD cooler for the CPU. One running a normalized noise level of 41 dBA, I can't go lower because that's how quiet my office is. A second run at maximum fan RPM regardless of noise and also a final run with maximum fan RPM, but with the front panel off. So let's look at the uh, result chart here. Looking at the chart, the CPU is being thermal throttled while running at volume normalized level of around 1100 RPM, also 41 dBA, throttling the CPU all the way down to 63 watts power draw instead of the full draw at 76 watts. 
At max RPM the fans, the CPU achieve a warm 82 degrees Celsius. No throttling, uh, but at the sacrifice of its sanity. Uh, listen to the noise. Finally, testing at max fan speeds without the front panel shows a reduction of about 1 degree Celsius, which means there is ample space from the side and also the cutouts to allow air to flow through even with the front panel on. Make no mistake, this is a good thing. There is not much changes to the GPU temperature, so not much to discuss there, except to let you all know there is ample space below the GPU and enough airflow from the front intakes even at low noise level to cool the GPU to a reasonably good temperature. Finally, let's talk value. Is it a good spend for your money? This casing retails at 339 ringgit. Definitely not the most affordable casing, nor does it reach the more expensive tier of casings. The price reflects exactly what you should get for the money you pay. Reasonably well-built casing with good quality paints. Consistent design language trued out and good amount of front I.O. ports and value added feature like the GPU support bracket, which is not available in more expensive cases from the likes of Lian Li or Corsair, by the way. So, what do I think? I think this case gets the recommended award from me, and you can get it in the link down below. So that's it for the video, guys. Like this video if it'll help you with your build process. Dislike it if you, it didn't help you, and tell me why in the comments down below. And also leave down in the comments below what else you would like to see from me. So cheers, and stay tuned.